lots of big things are coming up for the Wyatt Six, so we'll see what's new there. We'll also check out what's new with Rhea Ripley, Jey Uso, and more. Starting things off with everything new in the world of the Wyatt Six. Chad Gable confirmed last week that he wasn't done with the Wyatt Six, and how he was planning on targeting them and finishing them off once and for all. Chad Gable was previously on the runaway from the Wyatt Six, but now that he's got his new American-made faction by his side, he has newly found confidence to stand up against them and face them head on. This story picked up during a match between Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nil. Right in the middle of the match, the Wyatt shut down the lights and made an appearance. The first Wyatt Six member to be seen is Nikki Cross, who's standing right across from Ivy Nil. And obviously this was no accident at all. There was a specific reason why the Wyatts interrupted this match, and more specifically why Nikki appeared first out of the group to confront Ivy. Bo Dallas explained his main issue just a few weeks after the Wyatt Six first arrived. Bo pointed out that he found it disgusting that some individuals were turning on their families and friends just for their own selfish reasons. That right there is why the Wyatts came after Chad Gable in the first place. Gable was being very abusive towards his Alpha Academy faction and downright became very abusive to them. Uncle Howdy values family above all, so he just couldn't stand seeing Chad Gable abuse and betray his family when he should have been appreciating them. So after months of the Wyatts and Uncle Howdy trying to get that lesson and message across to Chad Gable, it looks like the message just wasn't properly understood and delivered. It wasn't delivered so much so that Ivy Nil just repeated the same original mistake that Chad Gable made to start the whole thing off. Ivy Nil and Maxine Dupree were best of friends for most of 2024. It even seemed Ivy would join the Alpha Academy at one point, but that entire friendship ended last week after Ivy brutally betrayed Maxine Dupree and beat her down to show her allegiance to American Maid. So basically what Uncle Howdy and Bo Dallas can't stand the most happens again right in front of their eyes. Family betraying family, friends backstabbing friends. So that's why Ivy Nil was basically the initial focus of the August 19th Wyatt Six attack. Nikki Cross was the first one to step in the ring alone with Ivy, with every intention to make Ivy pay for betraying Maxine, who was someone that was so close to her, just for her own selfish reasons. So Ivy repeated the same big white six sin, and they were right there right away to make her pay for it. Nikki Cross took out Ivy Nil, and then the rest of the white six came out to take out the male members of American Maid. Uncle Howdy appeared in the closing moments of the segment to lay out Chad Gable with a sister Abigail and end that segment. And then it was later announced that Uncle Howdy versus Chad Gable will be taking place on the August 26th edition of Raw. This is a pretty big deal, because it's technically Uncle Howdy's first official match, his big WWE debut. Howdy was first introduced in 2022, originally as the antagonist to Bray Wyatt, and eventually became an ally to Bray, who would handle some of the physical work. But at no time did Uncle Howdy ever officially compete in a match at all over the last few years. So this is the first time that the Uncle Howdy character will take part in a full official match. It's also the first Bo Dallas WWE match since way back in 2019. So a long-awaited five-year return to the ring for Bo himself, and a big debut match for the Uncle Howdy persona. It'll be very interesting because obviously we've never seen how Uncle Howdy behaves throughout a full match. Will he bring in some old tendencies of Bray Wyatt into his ring style? Will we see the spider walk? Will he brush off pain from time to time like the fiend did? And just what other little things could we expect to see Howdy bring out? This August 26 match very well could turn out to be the grand finale of the Wyatt Six versus Chad Gable feud. This feud has been going on since mid-June, so this could very well turn out to be the final chapter of this feud. It's a match that Uncle Howdy should very easily win, especially with it being his debut match. No way you put him in there just to get pinned and defeated. So you can count on Howdy winning this match. And the big mystery after that will be finding out what's next for the Wyatts after conquering American Maid, because there's so many exciting routes to take them in. 
does Howdy and the Wyatts continue to hunt down bad individuals that have turned on their family and friends, and continue to teach those individuals a lesson about betraying family? Or could the Wyatts slightly turn their heads towards championship gold? Nikki Cross set her sights on the women's world title. The other male members got for the tag team titles, while Howdy targets one of the singles titles. Remember that before the Wyatts appeared, Howdy was making lots of light teases and references towards Adam Pierce's time in the Firefly Funhouse. That was of course the same night in 2020 where Adam Pierce failed to get Roman to sign the Universal title match contract in time, resulting in Roman cheating, entering the match late, and stealing the Universal title from Bray Wyatt that Bray never got close to again after that night. So could Uncle Howdy still hold that against Adam Pearce and look to get his hands on either the World Heavyweight title or Intercontinental title in order to dedicate that win to Bray Wyatt? It seems like a possible scenario for sure. The last big exciting option that we haven't stopped talking about over the last few months is the recruitment of Alexa Bliss and Braun Strowman. Alexa Bliss appears to be cleared and ready to return. So if WWE decides to bring her back to television later in the year, it just seems like Uncle Howdy has to take notice of Alexa Bliss almost immediately. Same thing for Braun Strowman, who just returned to Raw. Strowman's got everyone hyped for a future interaction with the Wyatt Six after he revealed in an interview that he's purposely staying away from them because he can sense their energy trying to pull him closer to them, and he's scared about letting that former Wyatt family monster persona out again. So even with that interview response, Braun Strowman set up a pretty interesting premise for Uncle Howdy to target him. So Uncle Howdy's first ever match will be very exciting to see, and seeing what their next chapter will be even more exciting. Rhea Ripley and Jey Uso got fans talking so much that it eventually translated to Monday Night Raw. So let's see what that's about. Technically, this started a few weeks before SummerSlam. Upon seeing Rhea and Dominic's relationship crumble, Jey Uso made a move and took a shot at Rhea Ripley, since her character was now single. Rhea would generate more buzz around this situation after she sort of implied that she had given Jey Uso her number. And this situation have once again picked up some hype due to the recent Fanatics Fest event. At this event, Rhea collected a total of 71 fan-made bracelets, with some of the bracelets having Jay's name and catchphrase plastered all over them. Rhea would then wear some of the Jay Uso themed bracelets to Raw backstage. Jay snapped a picture of Rhea rocking his bracelet and posted it to his Instagram story. Rhea Ripley then reposted by taking a video of the Raw sign backstage, emphasizing and zooming in on the fact that Rhea and Jay were standing right next to each other on the graphic. And all this build-up would eventually translate over to the August 19th edition of Raw, where live fans in attendance were chanting and fully expecting Jay Uso to come out and make that save for Rhea and Damien against the Judgment Day. It's understandable for fans to think that, considering all the social media back and forth between Jay and Rhea, but Jay making the save there doesn't really make much sense. He may be crushing on Rhea, but that situation doesn't really concern him. He's focused on the Intercontinental title tournament, and potentially has other Bloodline reunions coming up, so he has a lot on his plate already. Maybe WWE will pay off the Jay and Rhea buzz with a backstage segment but doesn't appear like he's going to fully join this fight against the Judgment Day. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys!